another week, it will have been 30 years since the passing of the infamous and great uh, John Matuzak. Of course, Raiders won two Super Bowls with the Raiders in 77 and 81, and uh, a larger-than-life figure. And we're going to talk about him for the remainder of this hour. Just a fascinating story, and we are joined now uh, by someone who knows him very well because Steve Delson, of course, co-author of more than a half dozen books, including Jim Brown's biography, Out of Bounds, a book on the Bears, talk, and one that I love because because Steve and I are both originally from Chicago, Talking Irish, the Oral History of the Notre Dame Football. That's a good one for me as well. But Steve is a Peabody Award winner of ESPN for Outside the Lines on the Concussion Crisis. Go watch it. You can find it up online. He's now the president of Delson, uh, Delson Strategies uh, and an Emmy Award nominee for his series on the Penn State football crisis as well. You can check him out at Delson. That's D-E-L-S-O-H-N dot com. But the reason we're talking to him is because he co-authored Cruising with the Twos, 1985 John Matuzak's autobiography. And we go now to Los Angeles and welcome Steve in. How are you doing this morning, Steve? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing, hey, Steve. doing fantastic. Uh, just a fascinating subject uh, to talk about, of course, uh, John Matuzak and, uh, and, and his life and times. And, and you have a lot of stories, which were some in the book, some not in the book, of course. Uh, but before we explore that and explore him as a person, as a player, including his childhood and his career, how did you come to be the co-author of his autobiography? Uh, there was a guy named Joe Weeder who had founded a magazine called Muscle and Fitness. Yeah, and it was kind of like it was kind of legendary among people that worked out. Um, he was the person who discovered Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think, mostly. And Joe had a magazine, like I said, Muscle and Fitness. He wanted to. He was starting a new magazine. I helped him start a new magazine. He wanted to kind of uh, combine weightlifting with mainstream sports, uh, and the magazine was called Sports Fitness back then. It later morphed into Men's Fitness, which is more of a fitnessy magazine, but back then it was pretty hardcore sports slash weightlifting, and we did a cover piece on the Tuesday, and I was the writer, and we got to know each other a little bit, and he mentioned that he was thinking of doing a book, and that led to me becoming his co-author. Oh, nice. Yeah, fascinating. I mean, that, and that's you know, so many things like that, I think. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're a talented journalist and writer, Steve, so it wouldn't be surprising to have uh, someone uh, come to you and help them write a book. Uh, with Matuzak, I, I want to explore, because you spent a lot of time with him um, you look at his childhood uh, and 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 how that may have led to the man he became, including the kind of outrageous stuff. But he was a tall beanpole kind of kid, bulked up, played football. Um, his his upbringing uh, in in Wisconsin, suburban Milwaukee, of course, um, he lost two brothers uh, to cystic fibrosis at an early age, uh, living in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. When you, I, I'm sure you didn't dwell on that a lot with him, but when you talked to him about that, how much did that early life of his contribute to the man he would become and the two's person, persona that we know today? Oh, I think a lot. You know, I think anybody's childhood is formative. And you know, his father was a former Marine, uh, not real talkative with John. You know, kind of a taciturn guy. Um, John felt that the only time he talked to him, for the most part, was if he had screwed something up. Oh. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot of verbal affection. He was close with his mother. She was kind of his best friend, his anchor, I think, growing up. Um, but as you mentioned, he lost two little brothers to cystic fibrosis, which was devastating for the entire family. I think there's, you know, it's hard to figure out the human mind, but for anybody, and Matuzak was a complicated person, but I wouldn't be shocked if he felt some survivor's guilt. You know, I lost my little brothers. Why am I here? Um, I think he was damaged by that, as was his entire family. Um, you know, I was looking at the book again over the weekend, and I was struck by how tall and skinny he was. Uh, in high school, and you know he hadn't really filled out yet. He looked kind of gangly and awkward, 
And I think there were kids that made fun of them. Uh, you know, bullying is part of probably most kids' lives, but that doesn't make it any less, you know, painful at the time. Oh, sure. Um, and then, he, you know, he started to fill out. He became a football star in high school. He's also a star in basketball in the shot put. A lot of people don't realize, I think, that he was that good an athlete across the board. Um, but that started to become his identity. Um, you know, he was the star athlete. He was already tall. He started to get muscular. And he was bigger than everybody else. Um, and I think from a fairly... I wouldn't, you know, the, the, the legend of the twos kind of got cemented when he was in the NFL, but I think even from high school, college on, um, he started to become this larger-than-life figure to a lot of people. Yeah. And I think he tried I think he tried to live up to that, you know, also, which was part of the problem. Sure. Again, we're talking to Steve Delson, who was the co-author of uh, the book Cruising with the Twos, the autobiography of John Matuzak, who passed away 30 years ago next week. Uh partly due to uh, an overdose of prescription medications. And you talked about his childhood. Uh, just one thing, I mean, to, to show you, because one thing you hear about uh, John Matuzak, before we jump into the football piece, is that, you know, deep down under that exterior, he really, number one, cared about kids. And, and you can understand that losing two young brothers. But when he was 12 or 13, his two-year-old, his, his two-year-old brother dies, and he took it upon himself to buy shoes for his baby brother to be buried in because he heard his mother crying that her son's feet had gotten swollen when he died. Uh, and, and those types of things, you know, stick with a, a guy. And, and you, you, you try, especially if you look at the 70s and 80s, you know, today men are told to, to share feelings and all that. Back then, that wasn't necessarily the case. So Matuzak, coming out of that childhood, then goes off to the University of Missouri because he's now a football star in high school. He gets in trouble off the field, Steve. Uh, then he transfers to the University of Tampa, becomes the first pick in the NFL draft, the 73 draft. Uh, but he kind of bounces around. He's, he, he, it's, it's not, I don't think, an exaggeration to say he was a bust, considered where he was drafted. So Al Davis signs him in Oakland. Uh, was that just the match made in heaven that allowed him to, to kind of live out that persona and, and to become that larger-than-life figure? Yeah, but let's back up for a second because there's a couple of interesting things. You know, he, he went to the Houston Oilers. He was the first pick in the entire draft, as you said, and they were just a train wreck. Uh, they were a horrible team. They had uh, a lot of dissension internally. Uh, Sid Gilman was this old school NFL guy who became the coach after John got there, and he didn't care from the Tuzak at all. There was a strike going on. The NFLPA was on strike, and Sports Illustrated at a certain point took a photograph of Matuzak holding up a sign that said something like, I've got the words, but it referred to the strike, and he had like a fist up in the air. And so he was suddenly perceived as kind of this radical guy, which he was radical in certain ways, but he wasn't really radical politically. Right. Um, you, know, you know, again, middle-class kid from Milwaukee, son of a, a Marine. Um, so he jumped from the Houston Oilers to the World Football League, which was this fledgling league. And I think he played like literally seven plays. And then there were a bunch of cops on the sidelines uh, mm-hmm. that served him with a subpoena that had been sent there by the Houston Oilers. Um, and then he went over to Kansas City, where he almost died uh, one night of an overdose um, he was taking downers and drinking. Uh, Paul Wiggins, the head coach of the Chiefs, rode with him in the ambulance and reportedly was pounding on Matuzak's chest at one point because it looked like Matuzak had stopped breathing. Um, by the time he got to the – and then they traded him to the Redskins, he lasted, I think, a month. Um, by the time he got to the Raiders, he was on his way out of the league. And he wasn't just a boss. He would have gone down in history as probably one of the all-time you know, busts in NFL history. From first-round draft pick to three or four years into his career, he's on his way out of the league, probably going to play in the Canadian Football League. And then uh, Al Davis, who owned the Raiders at the time, uh, signed Matuzak after first doing a little bit of due diligence. I think he talked to Ted Hendricks the legendary linebacker for the Raiders and asked him about Matuzak and 
I think Hendricks looked around, you know, at the locker room, which had a lot of characters in it, and said something like, you know, what's one more? <laughs> well, and, and Steve, uh, we're going we're gonna to go to a break here in a few minutes, but you mentioned the story about the Chiefs. That same night, uh, he, his wife tried to run him over with a car, if I recall, uh, and then he, he fled to a cemetery, hid behind a gravestone, and then he made up with his wife or girlfriend or whatever it was at the time, and then he, he got into trouble, and you're, and you're right. Uh, his coach in Kansas City uh, basically got him to the hospital and saved his life. Uh, we're going to pick it up after the break with some more stories. We're talking to Steve Delson, uh, author of Cruising with the Twos, the autobiography of John Matuzak. So don't go anywhere. You're listening to The Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140. The only way to take Silver and Black today with you is with the Radio.com app. Download it today and search CBS Sports Radio 1140 in Las Vegas and listen to us anytime, anywhere. Welcome welcome back to Silver and Black Today. We're speaking with Steve Delson, who wrote the book Cruising with the Twos, the autobiography of John Matuzak. And we're talking about the fascinating character that was John Matuzak on almost the 30th anniversary of of his untimely passing. Now, Steve, when we look at John Matuzak, the football player, of course he had those great years in Oakland, 77, 81, two Super Bowl rings, um, but he never quite could sustain it. Was was that directly due to that off-the-field trouble, the, the abuse of alcohol, of drugs, um, and did he leave a lot on the table that he, that he could have really turned himself into one of the better players of the game? Yeah, I mean, I think there were a lot of things. He had some legitimate, serious injuries, um, which can happen to anyone and did happen to pretty much anyone, you know, played in the NFL. Um, But definitely his behavior off the field, you know, staying up all night, you know, showing up at practice, probably was still alcohol in his blood. That probably happened all the time. Um, There's no way you know, that that couldn't have had an effect on his performance, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, there were a lot of guys on the Raiders, and that doesn't justify John's behavior, but it was absolutely part of the culture on that particular team. Um, you know, at that particular time, you had Kenny Stabler, whose famous line was, you know, used to read the playbook by the light of the jukebox i think <laughs> yep uh, he probably said it more artfully but you know all those guys phil villapiano hendrix you know it was a really hard drinking team um and in some ways it was a good place from tuzak um because al davis and john madden allowed the players to be individuals they weren't on up on having a million rules um but it was also a hard party team and, uh, you know, that probably contributed to Matuzak's drinking, although i got to say, at that point in his life, um, you know, it probably wouldn't have mattered what team he was on. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was, he was a wild guy. He had a self-destructive streak, um, clearly. And I think, you know, like I said earlier, as his legend grew, um, you know, he wanted to be the biggest and the baddest. Um, I went out drinking with him one time. I wasn't drinking. I thought we were working, actually. We were working <laughs> uh, but I saw a side of him that kind of shocked me a little bit at the time. Because um, when I was working with him, he seemed like his head was in a good place. And we spent a fair amount of time. You know, you get together a couple times a week, typically, with somebody when you're writing a book and you turn on your tape recorder and do the interviews. And I only saw him party once over that entire period of time. I don't know what he was doing when I wasn't with him, but when I was around him, he seemed like he was healthy, seemed to be in a pretty good place emotionally. Uh, But we went to this legendary bar in Hollywood, uh, Imperial Gardens. They have sushi and sake and I had my tape recorder. I realized a few minutes in, we probably weren't going to get any work done. Um, and he ordered sake. And, you know, most people would order, you know, one drink at a time. Uh, <laughs> and he he ordered 16 little cups of sake. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 16? Now, they were, little, they were little cups, but there were 16 little cups. And I don't think I had any of it. 
Um, and he drank it all. And I forgot how long it took, but I think it didn't take that long. And suddenly, I, I, you know, I don't remember exactly how this started, but there was a man and his wife were kind of arguing at the bar. And it was not a loud argument, uh, but they were arguing. And Matuzak stood up and started lecturing the guy. Who didn't like it, obviously, but, you know, he was Matuzak. Um, <laughs> and then I don't remember if I went to the bathroom or what happened, but I took my eyes off Matuzak for a minute. And the next thing I knew, he was kind of standing up in the one of the open spaces, like between the bar and where the restaurant tables were. And he was doing karate moves. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, you know, first of all, you realize, when a guy that big is doing karate, like how much ground he covers. Um, and, but it was scary, you know, and he knew, he knew some karate and he was, you know, he was split basically. And what struck me at that moment that night was, if you've ever seen people who just at a certain point when they're drinking, they almost become a, another person entirely. It's almost like a switch goes yeah. on. And you just don't recognize that person anymore. That's what happened with Matuzak that night. Um, Yeah, and and that that seems to be a common theme. Now, we have a a couple minutes left, Steve, uh, and I know we could probably go on for two hours talking about the time you spent with him because uh, such a colorful guy. But the end of John Matuzak, of course, we all know what happened um, with the the um, drug-induced heart attack and overdose and all of that. Was there a different, was this going to be the ending? I mean, John tried to stay clean. The longest he could go was 89 days. Was this, was this something that was going to happen probably no matter what? Um, he, it, it, it's surprising, honestly, that he lived as long as he did uh. because he was so wild. Um, he didn't do well with leaving football, even though he had a good career in Hollywood. That was part of the tragedy of it. You know, he did have something going on in his life. Um, but he just, he just struggled so much with self-control. Um, I don't know if, you know, the other thing too, is we weren't talking about CTE back in those days. Right. Exactly. And I have, and I have no clue, you know the condition of his brain, but he played a lot of football for a lot of years. He probably had some brain damage to some degree. I think every single ex-football player does. They may not have CTE, but they probably have some long-term brain damage. Right, and, and Steve, um, we're, we're coming up on a, on a hard out here. but and, and, of course, you won your Peabody Award for um, part of a series in, on uh, outside the lines about the concussion crisis, and 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 of course we won't we'll never know with John Matuzak because he's gone, and this is before players uh, knew what was going on and could donate their brains for study as well. So, uh, Steve, we appreciate you being on. Make sure you visit Delson D E L S O H N dot com where you can hear more about um, what Steve is doing now. It does great work consulting. Steve, thanks for joining us and uh, getting everybody up to speed on what it was like to be around John Matuzak. You're very welcome. I appreciate you guys having me on. All Thanks, Steve. right. Thanks. Welcome back. Happy Sunday, everybody. You're listening to Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio, emanating from the future home of your Raiders, Las Vegas, Nevada. Big thanks to Steve Delson, of course, the author who wrote the autobiography, uh, co-wrote the autobiography of John Matuzak with the twos, cruising with the twos to be exact. Uh, fascinating discussion. We, we, of course, couldn't get to all of it with him uh, because there's just so much. I mean, uh, not only was Matuzak a colorful guy, uh, but the stories and and the legacy, if you will, if you want to call it that, of the player, of the man off the field is, is pretty remarkable. And uh, we want to continue that conversation uh, here with Kelly Kreiner, Chaz Osborne, my co-host and myself a little bit. And guys, you know, Steve talked about the question I asked him about was, was this going to be the ending for John Matuzak no matter what? The, 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 the drugs, the alcohol, the partying, uh, combined with the injuries he sustained playing football, especially to his back, 
was that going to be his end? Was it always going to be a fast, quick, young end? He died at 38 years of age in 1989 in Los Angeles. Um, and that seemed to be... Now, Steve said that he should have probably died earlier because of right. how, how hard he partied. Um, my question for you guys on this one is, and knowing he talked about Stabler, he talked about Villapiana, who we've had on our show many times, a great guy. Um, the way those guys, as hard as they went, could that, I mean, I don't think you could even do 25% of what they did then off the field uh, now in the NFL. Could you? I mean, you couldn't. Oh, no. Yeah, with the way social media and everything is, um, if yeah, it, it, everything would be, it'd be all over the place. The NFL would be on everybody. You know, you'd be headlining Sports Center, <laughs> Fox News all the time. I mean, it, it would be a circus. You know, back in the day, there wasn't as much media going around, and the media would cover for those guys, too. It's like, oh, wow. you, you see all the stuff that he got caught up in, Think of how much stuff never reached anything because it got buried. Yeah, and a lot of there'd be so many more suspensions and those kind of things now with all the new rules. And and you know they, he talked about, you know how they played back then. They they actually changed a lot of the rules nowadays because of the way those guys played back in the day. So it's, it is unfortunate his ending. Um, real name. You know his childhood and and uh, younger drug problems and. Unfortunately, that probably was the only way that it was going to end, and uh, you know, it's, he was he was a polarizing figure, and and that's one one thing we, we didn't want to see. No, well, and and again, you know, the, the thing about reading everything I could about uh, John Batuzak in preparation for the show, um, you know, you, you see a guy who with children was phenomenal. I mean, he he would go to children's hospitals, uh, obviously from his own experience and losing losing his um his two brothers and then later his sister to cystic fibrosis here was a man who was very caring yep. and and just people said when he got around kids he was so so um attentive to them and and um just you know a different person and so you, you i think you always have to put it into context as much as we hear about the partying and all that stuff you know there's more of a human being than right. just that persona than the actor than the football player and i think it's important that we represent that and that's one of the reasons we want to talk about st- Talk to talk about it with Steve uh, as well, and we have a caller on the line now, Audrey, who wants to talk about John Matuzak. Audrey, welcome to Silver and Black today. Thank you, and thank you for the lovely things you're saying. I, I hope you know the good side of John, like I did. I'm gonna cry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. That's okay. My son loved children. <laughs> He was a good guy. There were two Johns, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, I love my son with all my heart. Well, well, uh, Miss Matuzak, I, I want to thank you for calling in. And I know, I'm sorry, I know those wounds. Uh, being a father uh, of five children myself, um, you know, I know the, and, and my wife lost her sister when she was young. And her parents, you know, when you lose a child, doesn't matter what age, uh, you, don't, you don't ever, uh, it doesn't go away. It's always with you, and um, you know I was I was honored to to learn about your son and to know about the good things that he had done too. Because we do we hear a lot about, of course, the persona, right, the twos. But um, you know the story about about one of your sons passing and and him buying the shoes and all of that. It shows the heart. It shows. Uh, I've got to tell you another good story. Okay, great. He told his sister that had cystic fibrosis that if she if he made it big in the NFL or any place he would send her anywhere in the world and if he didn't he was going to take her to a little park to play and when she turned 16 when she turned 16 my other daughter Karen was married and lived in Panama and he sent Dawn because she wanted to go to Panama to see her sister <laughs> wow well and, and yeah. go ahead sorry Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, you know, your 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 son. Uh, and again, I, I, in in reading about him and 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 upbringing and what you all went through as a family, um, was was it hard for him uh, as he got older? Was, was the, the, having lost his brothers and then his sister was was that something that maybe no, his sister died after John after he passed? Okay, mm-hmm. okay. So when 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 his brothers passed at a very both at very early ages, of course. Um, well, you know he. 
he was so disappointed because uh, the first boy, Christopher, was a twin to my daughter, Christine, uh. and he felt gypped because he wanted a little brother so bad. Yeah. Wow. And is that, but is that something that you think, was it, was it something that the pain from that, uh, that I know you and your whole family dealt with, was the pain from that something that you feel contributed to him masking it with those things like alcohol and, and whatnot? Most definitely. Um, John would walk into a room, I'm, I swear to you, and it was like he took over the room. He was like a magnet. But <laughs> when he was bad, he was really, really bad. And I think it was because he, in his mind, he's always like, why am I still alive? And they're not. Yeah. That... It, was, it really bothered him a lot. And I don't know. How close he was to the niece. And, you know, and even his nieces and nephews, he'd have his niece and his three nephews out and, you know, about buying toys, doing something with them. <clears throat> and somebody say, hey, John, are those your kids? He said, you bet. He never <laughs> said they were his nephews and niece. <clears throat> And he adored them all, and he, he he just brought them out to California. They did things together. He loved his sisters, you know. And there's so many good parts of him that you, you can't explain it because people see this. And he had this society. He had to be a raider. He had to be tough. He had to, sure. you know. It was a part of his. It was part of his show. Yeah. Well, and, and, and he was. I mean, as a football player, as an actor, of course, an entertainer. And so I understand that. And. And uh, but but today, you know, I think that we live in a different time, right, where uh, men's men's mental health is still an issue. Uh, but th- to be able to deal with those issues, um, it's, it's unfortunate that that he wasn't able to. But we we wanted to make sure that we remembered some of those positive things as well. And we certainly appreciate you calling oh, in. And to I share appreciate this. your story. I, I love it. I'm not complaining about any of it. Oh, no, it's no. True. Yeah, no, no. And I, I appreciate that, uh, Miss yeah. Matuzak. And. And I would love uh, if you could, uh, David, our engineer, uh, will as I as I say goodbye to you. I just want to get your number if that's okay with you, because I'd like to call you because um, we we want to do a story for our website too about John, and I'd love to talk to you a little bit more in depth on that for that. Um, are you asking my mom for her phone number? This is Karen, her, oh. her daughter. Hi, Karen. Hi. Yeah, we will. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll put you on the line with our engineer, and if there's a, just a way to contact her, that would be great. Whatever whatever you're comfortable with, we appreciate it. Okay, sure, that's fine. Okay, thank you guys for calling in. Please uh, give your mother my best. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, there you have it. Uh, a surprise guest, uh, Audrey Matuzak, John Matuzak's mother. It's powerful stuff. It was, uh, and and she was obviously listening to the show and listening to Steve Delson. Uh, come on and talk about that. But again, you know, as I was saying, you know, uh, 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 there's more to a man than just uh, the the explosive and the mistakes. We all make mistakes. We all do things. Uh, but there are two sides to every person. Like she said, he, he's trying to live up to that that Raiders mystique himself, and so he only wants to show that tough guy side. Yeah. You know, and then behind the scenes, you know, he's doing a lot of great things. Kids, like we talked about, you know, and she did talk about, you know, his survivor's guilt. What what Steve Delshawn was talking about as well, mm-hmm. and Kelly. I mean, you you the first time I've ever had somebody's mother call in, but you know Audrey Matuzak, a mother who who lost four children. I was gonna say, yeah, ages. it's it's not just that it was you know John, it was all four, and it's it's also how you know cystic fibrosis is not something. I mean, that's very tough to bring up kids like that, and then to see the one you know John was like the one that didn't have the affliction but he had he had other issues like you know the addiction everything like that yep. take him so young i mean it's just yeah. brutal well and that and that's the key i mean again and and i want to thank audrey matuzak for for listening to the show and and being happy with how we were talking about john because his story is a mixed bag i mean there's bad things and and she recognized them uh and but she wanted to come on the show and and just talk about the good side of that and we want to recognize that too as well, and and that goes for all these Raiders, you know, uh, Lyle Alzado, of course, Ken Stabler, we know a lot about, and 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 Phil Villapiana, who we've had come on, who you know has had a beautiful family, beautiful kids, um, and so just fascinating to explore that, um, and uh, this show has turned very interesting, and, and we and, appreciate that. And you said it's a mixed bag, but more often than not, it's the bad stuff that you hear about with guys like this, because that's more interesting for people. You know, it's like yeah. they want to hear yeah. about because people love to tear people down and then, right. build, then build them back up. That's the American way. Absolutely. It's like if, 
they we build you up, make you famous or something. We destroy you, and then we can't wait for that comeback. Yep. Yes, well, I know, I know, and us being on the radio, we get lots of people who have nice things to say. Unfortunately, about John didn't uh, get that comeback. We're going to step aside when we come back. We're going to talk Kelly's Corner, Canada. We're li- you're listening to Silver and Black today here on CBS Sports Radio 1140.